dead fish in a river can mean that the water is polluted. This group of people are from the Environment Agency. They're being briefed about a suspected pollution incident. They suspect the outflow from a pipe. The scientists will take samples from both up and downstream of the source, as well as at the outflow, to confirm their suspicions. First, the scientist takes a sample from the outflow. And does some initial chemical analysis in the field. These indicator strips measure pH. The scientist compares the colours with the chart on the package. pH 7. This device measures temperature, dissolved oxygen and pH. Ideally, the dissolved oxygen should be 100%, but 80 to 90% would be good. The third figure down shows a dissolved oxygen, DO, level of about 55%. Suspecting organic pollution, the scientist tests for the presence of ammonia which would confirm such pollution. A few drops of reagent are added. Then the tip of an ampule of reagent is broken under water and a sample is drawn up. Comparing the resulting colour with standards shows that the level of ammonia is very high. The scientist needs to collect a sample for the lab as well as for use in evidence if the pollution incident leads to a prosecution. He splits the sample between two bottles He seals the lids and transports them in a labelled, sealed evidence bag. In the chemistry lab, the samples are unpacked, checked and small volumes taken for analysis.
The analyst's task is to test the samples for the presence of dissolved ammonia. The analyst carefully logs each sample. This machine combines mixing the samples with a reagent, which produces a color, and measuring the intensity of the color with a spectrophotometer. The mixing of the sample with the reagent is done robotically, and the machine can handle up to 1,000 tests per day. The robot collects a measured sample of the water and mixes it with a measured volume of reagent. After incubation, the color develops. The final color is read by the spectrophotometer, the greener the colour, the more ammonia is present. These graphs show how the light absorption, the deepness of the green colour, can indicate directly the concentration of dissolved ammonia. The upstream reading indicates good water quality. The downstream reading shows that the pollutant is affecting the river. The reading taken from the pipe is high and indicates the source of the pollution. Kicking the riverbed dislodges aquatic organisms which are caught in the scientist's net. Any algae? Um, no filamentous algae, no. Or about non filamentous? Non filamentous, there's about 50%. Thick? Yes. So, an identification of the animal species present and their numbers will give an indication of the extent of pollution. There's some mayflies there, look. Oh, yeah. Count them. Big ones. Oh, there's a red coronamid there. Oh, yeah. There's a couple of really big worms. The two scientists transfer the kick sample to an evidence bag for more detailed analysis in the laboratory. Just in case of a possible court case, great care is taken to log all samples. Some indicator species can tolerate quite high levels of pollution, such as this leech. Others are only found in clean water. Each organism in the sample is logged and counted, and each group of indicator species 
has a biotic index score that is used to calculate a water quality score. Those with a score of 10 are only found in clean water and are very sensitive to organic pollution. After the pollution incident, the team returns to the river to check the trout population. The scientists are using electrofishing. The fish are temporarily stunned so they can be caught and counted. They are not hurt and soon recover. And are returned by the scientist to the water, now clear of its pollution. <laughs>